All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Daily Digital Show. Uh, my name is Junior, and just checking the date here today is Thursday, August the 11th. Um, and we're going to have a wonderful show again, as always. I want to just inform you of all the cool new technology stuff that's been going on in our digital world. Um, everything from metaverse, blockchain, NFTs, uh, space, and artificial intelligence, pretty much everything um, technological. I'm, I'm here to let you know about it. Uh, so the first thing that we have here today is an NFT project that looks like it's going to be game ready right off the bat. Um, and as soon as you own it, you pretty much own all the IP that comes with it. The next thing is going to be about Ethereum, how they plan to be doing their merge here coming soon. Looks like in a month, maybe two months over to, um, or over from, um, Proof of work over to proof of stake. Um, the next one is going to be about a little technology called OCR. You'll know exactly what it is as soon as I show it to you. And then the last thing is going to be about a company called Gap. Gap, the clothes maker, is currently getting its NFTs or has been getting its NFTs already. So uh, we are going to take a quick break and then we will jump right into it. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, and it looks like we are back. We are still rolling, and let's jump over to the first article here. Um, this NFT called Jurassic Punk's NFT is a unique generative NFT collection built directly onto the Un Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so if you don't know what Unreal Engine 5 is, it's a gaming engine. People who make video games been using it for years and years and years. Some of the top major games like Fortnite have been created. Was Fortnite on it? Yeah, I think Fortnite was created on it. If not, it's been created on like Unity. Uh, Unity is basically Unreal Engine's competitor or whatever. Um, but since uh, the rise of like the metaverse and everything, a lot of people have been using Unreal Engine for cinematic movies, for a whole bunch of other stuff. And it looks like this NFT project is being built onto... Uh, the Unreal Engine platform because they can actually make it pretty much game ready. I mean, this is a platform used for games, so why not? Um, they are calling this JPunks, so JPunks NFT, and this project is a dream come true for us as creators as we have no doubts that our team's ability to execute and drive the NFT and metaverse space into the future. Um, this NFT was created by Meta Lab Studio an animation and filmmaking studio that was founded to by two veterans in the VFX industry. Uh, they have worked with the work with and led some of the most influential studios in the post industry, working with clients such as Nike, Coca-Cola, Lacoste, Audi, and Rolex. Alongside some of the world's best directors, the team has a wealth of experience in VFX. Um, motion capture, storytelling, animation, and Web3. They work together utilizing decades of high edit studio experience to push boundaries within the NFT and Web3 space. Uh, there's a quick backstory about them 65 million years ago, yada, yada, yada. You guys can read that stuff. But I kind of want to get into the NFTs. Um, and not that part of the NFTs. I think, uh, ah, this one right here. So the purpose of it being built on top of the Unreal Engine platform, Jurassic Punks is going to empower each one of its owners with their own 3D rigged model. Uh, so first of all, if you don't know anything about rigging, please don't get into it because it is a process, a uh, very daunting process at that. Um, it, uh, I think animating. So in order for all of these different characters to get animated, they first need to be rigged. Rigged is basically giving all of your characters bone structure that can be moved. So all of your fingers and toes and limbs and stuff like that need to have bones and joints attached to them so that they can actually be animated and moved and look real. Um, so now these uh, NFTs, these 3D NFTs are going to come already pre-rigged and you're also going to keep all of the commercial IP rights to it. Um, and they will be ready to integrate into compatible games as well as compatible metaverses. They are delivering an animated series and a live digital fashion show metaverse starring 
owners of J Punks, utilizing their own 30,000 square foot motion capture studio setup, blurring the lines between physical and digital. And just yesterday, we just talked about the word of the week was fidgetal. Um, so this, I mean, this is, it, it's happening, guys. This is really right up that alley right there. Um, so yeah, so these NFTs are going to be 7,707. I really don't know where to get these numbers from. Uh, 7,777 Jurassic Punks NFTs and power owners with their own 3D rig models. Uh, we just re- kind of read all that. The assets have been pre-built in Unreal Engine 5 by J Punk's award-winning visual effects team. Uh, they keep talking about their, their thing there. They use motion capture. Um, and some more good stuff there. So we're going to go ahead and jump over here to their website. It's just JurassicPunks.io. And as you can see here, they've got a couple of different examples of them there. Uh, I'm just going to keep on kind of writing down the line here. Meta Labs is the team. They've got their, their members there, the team members. Uh, ah, there it is, studio. They want, I just want to show you guys the studio that they keep talking about. Uh, it's also the hub of J-Punks and where we shoot all of our mocap and virtual fashion sessions. You'll, you, you'll, you, you'll, you'll, you'll always find a friendly J punk walk in the halls. Um, the tech, uh, we are using motion capture with a film quality accent setup and also have support for facial recognition using Apple's AR kit. I think I talked about AR kit before already, uh, meaning you can control your J punk face from your phone. That's really big right there or even use him as an avatar on your Zoom call. Again, really big right there. The possibilities are endless. We have a huge, we have huge plans for this. Um, we will be incorporating new services and educating you to make it easier for you to animate your own J-Punks in the future. Uh, then they got the roadmap and everything. So um, you guys let me know what you think about that. I, I again, never really heard of J-Punks uh, until recently, Jurassic Punks. Uh, I think that's one to actually look into and, and possibly get to be able to get a already rigged um, avatar and then actually place it inside the metaverse or place it using like Zoom calls and stuff like that. Um, I myself would 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 definitely uh, would definitely check that out. It's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, so the next thing we have here is going to be all about Ethereum. Ethereum just pulled off. It's final test run of uh, the most important event in crypto. So if you don't know Ethereum, when you mint NFTs and do all of this stuff uh, on Ethereum, like switch, um, not switch, trade crypto and, and, and everything, it takes a lot of work to do that. I mean, a lot. And with all that work, it takes a lot of money because all that work creates energy and all that energy costs money. Um, but, uh, so yes, yeah, so I think I said a month, two months, so it looks like it's going to happen next month. Um, this article was just published just yesterday, August 10th. Um, but yeah, so what they're essentially going to be doing is that, uh, so first of all, if you don't know, proof of work model, uh, involves a complex math equations to massively, um, that's massive numbers of machines race to solve and it requires an abundance of energy. So basically proof of work, uh, you have to do the work to solve the math problems. And it's essentially just algorithms that bits and pieces of code have when the, um, transaction takes place and all that good stuff. Uh, any transaction that takes place on the blockchain, I mean, just bits and pieces of code that are moving from one location over to another and creating new, you know, getting generated and stuff like that. Um, but now with the proof of stake version of it, uh, that Ethereum will be shifting over to this new model is going to be, um, you know, basically kind of like a secure network, uh, rather than relying on energy intensive mining, the new method is going to require users to basically leverage their existing cash of ether as a means of verify or as a means to verify, uh, transactions and mint tokens. It is far less. It uses far less power and it is also expected 
to translate into faster transactions. And that's going to be a key thing there to start kind of getting these things going mainstream. Um, yeah, the final test took place Wednesday at 9.45 p.m. Uh, they called it another successful test. They've been working on this for quite some time using their Beacon test net. Um, trying to see. Uh, yeah, the price of Ether, the token native to the Ethereum blockchain has been on an upswing rising nearly 80%, including a gain of 10% in the last 10 or last 24 hours to around 1,875. However, it's still down by about half this year. Um, yeah, so they've been doing a lot of stuff on their test nets. Um, Gorly, they've been doing stuff on that. Beacon, they've been doing stuff on that. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of information here um, that you guys can kind of uh, check out as well to see how well that went. I'm, I'm really curious to see how well it goes uh, once it actually takes place next month to, I mean, because uh, to Proof of stake is going to be like crazy ridiculous. Um, and if it's as fast as they say it's going to be, it's going to be a, a good move. But definitely saving energy, saving power, um, saving the earth or whatever is always a good thing. Um, but we know we're, we're not perfect. So it's not, it's going to be a, a small step, <laughs> a small step in the right direction, I will say. All right. So from there we have Gap. Gap is a clothing company who is getting into nfts and this was kind of like it was one of those websites that didn't really have much information i really dislike those websites they don't have like a about section they do have down here a learn more button but i'll show you what they what they have on the learn more button but first we have here gap um and it just kind of talks straight into like if you already know what they're talking about. If you fuse your four common and two rares into collector special, you have access to limited six limited edition epic NFTs. Now, what are commons? What are rares? It's like they don't really tell you. And then you hit how it works, and then it doesn't really tell you how it works. Uh, when it takes you down here and says how it works, and it says to qualify to purchase an epic. You need to collect two different common and two different rare. Like, okay, where are they? Where did I get them from? Yada, yada, yada. Uh, fuse six NFTs together, four common and two rare from the same series in order to get a collector special edition. You fuse NFTs qualifies you to access and buy epic NFTs designed by artists. So I'm assuming these are the NFTs that you can buy. This is a common. That's a common. Uh, all these are common. Oh, these are rares here. These two are rares. Uh, I don't know what this is. I'm assuming this might be a special edition since it doesn't say. Yeah, by, by a specific artist. This, this might be one too. I'm just going to click on that one. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this is an epic. This is an epic one. So yeah, so when I, I would go back here, yeah, I think if I click on how it works, um, no, if I click on learn more, it'll take me to this website, which looks like I already had it up already also. Um, but yeah, learn more. I don't really learn more <laughs> when I come here again. This is the epics that they have. Hit collect, you can't collect it because you don't have a common or four commons, two rares. Uh, upcoming drops. Um, yeah, just talks more about the rares and, and epics there. Airdrop dates. Uh, 
have a Metallic or Dapper Dan NFT. Watch for a Gap X debit common airdrop for a free wallet. Frank Ape or Dapper Dan. So I guess they've been they've been airdropping into people's wallets. Looks like there. Uh, and again, it goes through the how it works here. Common, rare, epic, the rules, why they chose Tezos. Uh, requires less energy and cost to operate than proof of work. Again, there's that proof of work thing. Tezos, I believe, is already on proof of stake. So yeah, so that is pretty much it that I that I get from this. Uh, I mean, I get the process. I get, I understand how it works. I guess it's because I know already a lot about NFTs. So to somebody who doesn't know much about NFTs, I feel like this is not very clear. You know, this like just collect these cards group those cards you get this card i i get that portion of it i don't know i think i might be just <laughs> i may, might be just kind of like looking for more and more is not coming or something like that um but i really want to get a full breakdown of how their nfts work what they offer what are the utility you know so on and so forth so we'll see how that one turns out uh they've been doing it for quite some time as well so they've probably, you know already been in, in process of it um, but just one, if you've been, if you're a gap lover and been wanting to get NFTs, I mean, that's a, it's like a win-win situation there, I guess. All right. So the next item up here off the block is going to be OCR and OCR. Again, you've probably seen around a bunch of times. Um, well, maybe not. So OCR to me is semi new. But at the same time, it's not. Um, this article came out May 5th of 2021. I have an iPhone. I recently learned that you can actually take a picture of something with the iPhone. And it, it'll translate that into text so that you can like copy it. The words, not the, not the whole image, but the words on the image. So like, for example, this person in this picture... It says life insurance policy, and that's a picture that they just took on his paper on his table. But now they can actually take this, and this will be actually like worded, so they can actually like copy and paste life insurance policy and stuff like that. Um, and where this comes in handy at is, uh, yeah, what about real use cases for the software? Big thing that they're talking about is payments and transfers can be much faster with bank card recognition. Uh, I don't see how, but if you're one of those people that, you know, use your phone to, uh, take, make digital copies of your, uh, or to deposit a check into your bank using your cell phone or stuff like that, that might be, you know, something there, uh, replacement of the manual data entering with a QR code PDF or, uh, barcode scanning as well as card recognition tends to avoid annoying and unnecessary errors in the intern info and to improve user experience in banking apps, online shops, and even on offline shops. Uh, for ticket sales is another thing that using the for demand, ticket sale demand entering the personal data of thousands of people every day, automatic MRZ scanning or passport recognition can speed up the uh, selling process and minimize the error time. Remote client identification is a popular and essential modern feature for many tasks. And also banking, again, banking services, recognize your ID. Um, I think they had a, yeah, they have a quick video on that too here. I'm going to just play this real quick. All those different forms of ID you can take a picture of. Get all the information out of there. Uh, so yeah, that was like 20 seconds. Uh, but heck, I mean, for me personally, forget all that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how they're going to make that work for like college students because I could have definitely used that in college um, to where like, I mean, because right now they have like uh, text readers and stuff like that, right? If I could just like take a picture of every page in a chapter or something like that, turn on my text reader and just listen to the person read the textbook. I mean, I would have saved me a lot of time, like a lot of time. Um, 
heck, even like, you know, copying down friends' notes or something like that because you missed class or whatever. They got a bunch of notes. So you could just like copy or take a picture of that note, get it all written out and stuff like that. You can like, you know, change things up or whatever. Um, that to me is powerful. So pulling information off of a image is, is, is um, I mean, in my opinion, like you can go really far with that. And again, I mean, you know, all the other stuff is cool as well. Um, I'm thinking like personal stuff. How could I actually use that? Uh, I know for sure Android, you can already do that. Apple computer or Apple's iPhones. Uh, I believe you can also do that. I think I've done it on my iPhone before and I was like amazed, like, oh my goodness, it actually turned it into text and I can copy and paste it, whatever. But, um, so yeah, so that is all I have for you guys here today. Please do check in with me on all my social media channels. Uh, I appreciate everyone's time for sure. Uh, Daily Digital wouldn't be anything without you guys. And also, uh, if you are interested in more or learning more about some of the articles that I spoke here about today, the links to every single one of them are going to be in the description below. Um, so until next time, you guys have a great one.